Hello, uh, welcome to the next video of uh, EC573 Advanced Embedded Logic Design. Now in the block diagram, what we have done, we have added the uh, ILA, which is the integrated logic analyzer. And what it does, it captures the data. Now at what time it captures the data, which we can put the trigger here, okay? So we'll look into this in more detail. So we'll go to the hardware manager. You will see that you have the uh, all the uh, five interface. Now this interface is the MAXI MM2A. So that is memory map to stream. This is from the system memory to the DME. This is from the, uh, this is the AXI one. So I'll put it in the top. So it is the AXI one, which is used by the processor to configure the DME. Then this is the, M A X S S to M M that is from D M A to the memory. This is from X A X I S that is M M to S that is from the D M A to uh, F F T stream interface, and this is from the F F T to D M A that is the stream interface. Now, if you want to capture the data, how the data is going? What we are going, uh, we can put the trigger at any of this point. So to put the trigger, just click on this plus button. Okay. So you will get the list of all the signals you can put the trigger on. So last time we put the trigger on the, uh, uh, the DMA uh, output to the 350. Now we'll put the trigger on the FFT output to the DMA. So that is the MAXIS data. So let's find out that MAXIS. So this is the DMA. Uh, where is the MAXIS? Uh, This is the MM to S. Okay, so suppose I want to put the trigger on this uh, uh, FFT output, then what I'll do is that I'll put this one, okay, that is this uh, signal. I'll copy it here. Okay, I'll drag it here. Then in the trigger, I'll say that it is zero to one and then I'll run the trigger. Now, uh, this run trigger should be done after you enter into the debug mode in the SDK. So I'll go in the SDK, I'll right click. Okay, I'll go to the debug all. In your case, it should be launch on hardware. I'm doing a launch on hardware system debugger. Okay, so it should configure the FPJ first if possible. And then it should start. Okay, so now it is done. Uh, I'll now run the trigger. Okay, and I'll run the code entirely. So, or what I'll do is instead of running the code entirely, I'll run the code up to this point. Now you can see that up to this point, we have not communicated to, to the DMA. So the trigger should not work out. Okay, so the trigger should not uh, work here. So I'll just do it as a run to line. Okay, so it has run to line and here you can see that the trigger has not occurred. Now uh, let's go to the code here again and we'll go to the this point where we have completed the FFT on the hardware. You can see that the trigger has happened. And now this is the interesting things. Like you can see a lot of things here, all your AXI uh, interface you can study here. So now here you can see that, now I'll close everything and I'll try to capture the data. So you can see that using those 10424 samples we have captured, we are seeing that so many transactions have happened. So you can see that here, mm to s interface, that is the memory map to stream. You can see that the data has been read by the DMA from the memory and it is then passed to the FFT. You can see mm to s on the stream interface. Then the FFT completes the task, FFT processing, and then send the data back to the DMA and DMA forwards the data back to the memory on to s to m. Okay. And you can see this AXR light interface is nothing but the what we are doing with the status and the control registers of the DMA. Okay, so we'll go into this detail in more. 
because this is the thing we need to understand here. So you can see that there are all the channels of the uh, uh, the DMAs are there, uh, AXI are there, read, write, what. So one thing I would like to uh, look into that at the end of our, at the end, somewhere at the end, we are doing the read operation from the DMA and we are checking whether the DMA is ideal or not. So we can see that we are sending at the address, right? We are sending some uh, address and we were sending the address of say three, four and the uh, zero, four, right? And we will see whether it is matching with our uh, what we were we were doing. So let you can see we were doing this three four red. Then uh, here you can see we are doing the three four again. Then here also three four. Here, let's look into the details. You can see three four. Okay, then. Uh, uh, yeah, three, four. Yeah, I just want to zoom in properly so that we can see all the details. Okay, so you can see that the, we are doing continuously trading the status from the three, four. You can see here we are reading it from the zero, four. And then on the read channel, we'll get the status. Okay, on the read channel, you can see we are doing the zero, four read. And we are getting the data, which is the uh, which which you can see this data is two. You can see we are looking at the ideal bit, and it is indicating that the uh, DMA is ideal. So from zero four we may move to the thirty four. Now thirty four we can see that we are getting the zero, so that that means DMA is not yet ideal. Here again we read it after while loop. You can see that the DMA is not yet ideal. It continues, and after some time, you can see that uh, we are continuing one. And here we got that the okay. Uh, here we got that the DME is ideal. Okay, so this is how our code is converted into the set of uh, transactions. Okay, uh, in the beginning, if I want to show it in the beginning, you will see that the, there will be a lot of read operation or uh, especially the right operation. So I'll go down here. I'll see the right operation to the control register, okay? So you go to the AW1 here, address channel, okay? And you will see that the lot of right operation to the control register will be happening here. I'll do here. You can see there is a 30. 30 is the control registers of that one. And then it is 52 and it is 1C. So you can see, no, not 1C, it should be 18. So all this control register uh, is being written here in the right operation. So this is how the DMA configuration takes place via AXI light protocol. Then now uh, we, are, we have received the data from the memory. So you can see that the data is read from the uh, memory. So there is a read transaction, there is no write transaction. And in the read transaction, you can see that the data is being read from the this address. So, so this is the address transaction. It is saying that read the data from this address, 1182B4. Uh, uh, this is saying that the total amount of data, that means your bus size. And this is saying that the uh, what is the data in each bus, eight byte of data, okay? So you can see that all this information is being saved over the read transaction. And then over after the read transaction on the read data, you will see that the corresponding uh, data is being received. So you can see that the, uh, the read transaction happens here and the data is being received from the memory to the DMA. Now the same data, okay, uh, you can see that the same data is being passed to the uh, FFT as an input, then FFT output is passed to this. So you can look into this in more detail uh, whenever you get time. So this is how the ILA can be used to verify whether the data is being communicated to the hardware from the processor correctly. Or now one challenge here is that uh, what we want is that whenever we put the breakpoint, and when the code stop at that breakpoint, we want this, the trigger should ca capture the data at that breakpoint. And that is called as a cross triggering. So whenever the software stops, 
uh, the corresponding hardware should also stops and the corresponding data should be captured and displayed. So this cross-tickering we will discuss in the next week video.